talking about today, what the Lord has to say about the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 18. Before we get started into that, we'll go ahead and get started into prayer. Come Lord Jesus, we invite you into this video today to speak through me everything you want us to know. Give us spiritual eyes to see the things that you want us to see, spiritual ears to hear the words that are spoken today, a spiritual heart to be open and able to receive all that you have for us, Father. Give us wisdom, understanding, knowledge, and discernment about what we're about to read, watch, and listen to as we put on the helmet of salvation, breastplate of righteousness, belt of truth, feet of readiness, shield of faith, sword of the Spirit. If there's anyone we need to be praying for, speaking encouraging words to, and or listening to, just show us that person, Father God. We pray that you heal our bodies, minds, and spirits. Take away any and all distract, distractions away from us so we can focus on you. We pray against any attacks of the enemy over this video, this channel, us, our loved ones, our leaders, others in the world. We pray for God's blessings over this video, this channel, us, our loved ones, our leaders, others in the world. We pray for God's favor over this video, this channel, us, our loved ones, our leaders, others in the world. We pray that you give us, our loved ones, our leaders, others in the world, godly and divine wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to make the right choices and decisions today, Father God, not only for the betterment of us, but others as well today. We thank you for that. We pray that you guard and protect us and our vehicles, our loved ones and their vehicles, our leaders and their vehicles, others and their vehicles, and the animals as well, as we're traveling to and from different locations. Just drive for us today, Father God. Send down our guardian angels to protect us. We thank you for them. Give them and us the rest and restoration we both need to do the work you've called us to do. Just work in us, for us, and through us today, Father God. And protect us from others and others from us. Send down the Holy Spirit to guide us into all truth today. We plead the blood of Jesus and pray Psalm 51 and 91 over us, our loved ones, our leaders, others in the world. And we pray for the safety of our cities and the people in them. We pray that you show mercy on us and heal our land. We come to you in repentance, Father God, and ask that you forgive us of each and every sin, whether it be in word, thought, and or deed, that we've committed against you, others, and or ourselves, as we forgive those who sinned against us. We pray for our enemies and anyone listening today who has not yet accepted you as their Lord and Savior and would like to do so now. We pray John 3.16 over you. For God so loved the world that he sent his one and only begotten Son, that whosoever shall believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. So if you prayed that prayer with me today, you can know that you're going to go to heaven someday with the rest of the people that accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. For it's not by works so that no man shall boast. And there's not enough good works that any of us can do to earn our way to heaven. It's only through the perfect sinless life that was Jesus being born, died, buried, and rising again for our sins and the sins of the world. For all those that choose to accept it will enter heaven someday. Those that choose to not accept it will enter hell. We don't want anyone to go to hell. So we pray that everyone accepts this free gift of grace before it's too late. Father God, I thank you for this person that accepted you as their Lord and Savior today. Help them in their daily walk and relationship with you to get into prayer with you each and every day. That's just like what we're doing now, talking to you, listening for your voice, and obeying what you tell us to do. And help them to get into your word each and every day, which is the Bible and stands for basic instructions before leaving earth, so they can discern between the truth and the lies, and the truth will set them free. Show them the gifts and talents that you've given them, and how to use them for your glory to help those around them that are in need. 
It's a God divine appointment that you're here today. God brought you to this channel because he wanted you to spend eternity in heaven with him. So Father God, I thank you for this person and everyone listening today. Pray all of this in Jesus' mighty name and all God's people said, Amen. All right, let's go ahead and get started into what the Lord has to say about the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 18. So if you have your Bibles and you like to follow along, go ahead and turn them to the book of 2 Chronicles chapter 18 and we'll get started. Thank you. Now, Jehoshaphat had riches and honor and abundance and joined affinity with Ahab. And after certain years, he went down to Ahab to Samaria. And Ahab killed sheep and oxen for him in abundance and for the people that he had with him and persuaded him to go up with him to remote Gilead. And Ahab, king of Israel, said unto Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, Wilt thou go with me to remote Gilead? And he answered him, I am as thou art, and my people as thy people, and we will be with thee in the war. And Jehoshaphat said unto the king of Israel, Inquire, I pray thee, at the word of the Lord today. Therefore the king of Israel gathered together of prophets four hundred men, and said unto them, Shall we go to the remote Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And they said, Go up, for God will deliver it into the king's hand. But Jehoshaphat said, Is there not here a prophet of the Lord besides, that we might inquire of him? And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, There is yet one man by whom we may inquire of the Lord, but I hate him. For he never prophesied good unto me, but always evil, the same as Micaiah, the son of Imla. And Jehoshaphat said, Let not the king say so. And the king of Israel called for one of his officers and said, Fetch quickly Micaiah, the son of Imla. And the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, king of Judah, sat either of them on his throne, clothed in their robes, and they sat in a void place at the entering in of the gate of Samaria. And all the prophets prophesied before them. And Zechariah, the son of Shekinah, had made him horns of iron, and said, Thus said the Lord, With these thou shalt push Syria until they be consumed. And all the prophets prophesied so, saying, Go up to remote Gilead and prosper, for the Lord shall deliver it into the king of the hand of the king. And the messenger that went to call Micaiah spake to him, saying, Behold, the words of the prophets declare good to the king with one assent. Let thy word, therefore, I pray thee, be like one of theirs, and speak thou good. Micaiah said, As the Lord liveth, even what my God saith that I will speak. And when he was come to the king, the king said unto him, Micaiah, shall we go to remote Gilead to battle, or shall I forbear? And he said, Go ye up and prosper, and they shall be delivered into your hand. And the king said to him, How many times shall I adjure thee that thou say nothing but the truth to me in the name of the Lord? Then he said, I did see all Israel scattered upon the mountains as sheep that have no shepherd. And the Lord said, These have no master. Let them return therefore every man to his house in peace. And the king of Israel said to Jehoshaphat, Did I not tell thee that he would not prophesy good unto me, but evil? Again he said, Therefore hear the word of the Lord. I saw the Lord sitting upon his throne, and all the host of heaven standing on his right hand and on his left. And the Lord said, Who shall entice Ahab, king of Israel, that he may go up and fall at remote Gilead? And one spake, saying after this manner, and another saying after that manner. Then there came out a spirit and stood before the Lord and said, I will entice him. And the Lord said unto him, Wherewith? And he said, I will go out and be a lying spirit in the mouth of all his prophets. And the Lord said, Thou shalt entice him, and thou shalt also prevail. Go out and do even so. Now, therefore, behold, the Lord hath put a lying spirit in the mouth of these thy prophets. And the Lord hath spoken evil against thee. Then Zedekiah, the son of Kekanai, came near and smote Micaiah upon the cheek and said, 
which way went the Spirit of the Lord from me to speak unto thee? And Micaiah said, Behold, thou shalt see on that day when thou shalt go into an inner chamber to hide thyself. Then the king of Israel said, Take ye Micaiah and carry him back to Ammon, the governor of the city, and to Joash, the king's son, and say, Thus saith the king, Put this fellow in the prison and feed him with bread of affliction and with water of affliction until I return in peace. And Micaiah said, If thou certainly return in peace, then hath not the Lord spoken by me. And he said, Hearken, all ye people. So the king of Israel and Jehoshaphat, the king of Judah, went up to remote Gilead. And the king of Israel said unto Jehoshaphat, I will disguise myself and will go to the battle, but put thou on thy robes. So the king of Israel disguised himself, and they went to the battle. Now the king of Syria had commanded the captains of the chariots that were with him, saying, Fight ye not with small or great, save only with the king of Israel. And it came to pass, when the captains of the chariots saw Jehoshaphat, that they said, It is the king of Israel. Therefore they compassed about him to fight. But Jehoshaphat cried out, and the Lord helped him. And God moved them to depart from him. For it came to pass that when the captains of the chariots perceived that it was not the king of Israel, they turned back again from pursuing him. And a certain man drew a bow at a venture, smote the king of Israel between the joints of the harness. Therefore he said to his chariot man, Turn thy hand, and thou mayest carry me out of the host, for I am wounded. And the battle increased that day, Howbeit the king of Israel stayed himself up in his chariot against the Syrians until the even. And at about the same time of the sun going down, he died. And that's the end of what the Lord has to say about the book of Second Chronicles chapter 18. Hope you all enjoyed and were blessed by it today. And until next time, bye!